Hey everybody, uh, good morning. It's Pastor Kirk here. Uh, we're uh, excited to be with you guys as we walk through the book of Acts together as a church for our daily devotionals. It's been great. Um, I mean, the book alone is great, but just having uh, so many great people uh, just be able to teach through it, share some insight through it, uh, just expound upon God's Word. Uh, it's been awesome. So let's get to it. Today we're in Acts chapter 7. Uh, we're actually in a pretty famous passage, pretty famous kind of uh, just situation that you, maybe you've heard of. Uh, it's it's 54 through 60, and it's um, the stoning of Stephen. Uh, and so first off, the cultural context is very different from ours, so let's just say the, the death of Stephen, okay? Now let's get that out of the way. But um, what we see in this passage is just a few important takeaways that, you know, death for Christians, right, because of the resurrection of Jesus, because of the work of Jesus, is not the final act, right? And we see that in Stephen. We also see that because of our eternal security, if you, if you are follow, if you're found in Christ, that, you know, it calls us to long for eternal security for others, even our enemies. And, and lastly, those others or people we see as, as enemies, you know, they may in fact one day be those who God calls to actually do incredibly powerful things for his kingdom. And so let's read it. Let's talk through a little bit about it. And it says this, now when they heard these things, they were enraged and they found, they ground their teeth at him. <laughs> Very interesting scene. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with him a loud, with, out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. Remember that name? And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against him. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Really powerful passage. We see um, Stephen had actually just proclaimed the gospel message. And, and what happens when the gospel message is proclaimed, right? Um, well, there, there's a, a, a conviction to it, right? There's a response to it. And, and it's a call to, to really repentance. And sometimes that goes well and sometimes that doesn't. As, as Paul says in First Cor in Second Corinthians, he says, you know, for some that is the sweet fragrance of life to life and to others it's death to death, right? Some people, they melt when they hear that. It's good news. And other people, it just stirs up anger. And in this case, this is what happened to Stephen. It stirred up anger against the, 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 the people who, who uh, he's preaching to. or They're, they're angry because uh, of what Stephen is sharing, this, this gospel news. And uh, that, and Stephen, he, you know, he knows that cost, right? He, he knows that uh, this potentially could happen, that he's, his boldness, his, his, uh, his, his thoughts and his, his truth about Jesus um, could pen, potentially lead to this. And he knows his current sufferings, though, that, that they don't compare to the future glory, right? To, to the future glory, they don't compare, so his boldness, the challenges he has to make, the decisions he has to make, right? They may be uncomfortable at the time. And in this case, it's death. Yes, it's uncomfortable. But it doesn't compare to the future glory. And and look what the pastor says. It says he sees Jesus, right? The Spirit feel, fills him, right? And points to Jesus. That's important. The Spirit fills him and points him to Jesus. And his gaze is upon Jesus, who is the author and finisher of his faith. And, and because he sees Jesus, he sees eternity. He sees hope. He sees what's to come. He sees uh, just everlasting love. And because he's overwhelmed with everlasting love, then he can look through the eyes of Jesus, right? He can look through the heart of God on those who are persecuting him, those who are stoning him. He sees them through new eyes. Look, verse 60 says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them, right? And it, it, it's very similar to Jesus himself on the cross declaring, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And, and so Stephen, he's, he's no longer thinking about his circumstances, which I'm sure was really hard because he's being pummeled with rocks, right? But he sees Jesus. And, you know, reality is I think for many of us, we, we might not experience martyrdom. We might not be looking at a, that type of persecution. And, and maybe we will. I, I'm not sure. But we may experience some hatred at times or persecution at times that we, uh, because of our boldness or because of our message. And we can endure 
and walk forward when we fix our eyes on Jesus. When we gaze upon him when we, we, we get, gain the heart of the Father. When we gain the heart of the Father. And Stephen, he, he departs from this world through this action of, of, of pleading for their ignorance, pleading for the ignorance of those who don't know whom, who, who yet have not received that message of chosen to follow Jesus. And, and Stephen could have said mean things, explicit things. He could have blasted them, Facebook, whatever, whatever it is, right? He could, have, he could have chosen that, but he chose to respond the way that Jesus calls us to, by loving his enemies enough to pray for them. By loving his... So for us, do we love our enemies enough to pray for them or do we just want to dehumanize people or get our point across at any cost, right? And what does that do to our witness? What does it do to our witness? And what he does is he asks God for mercy towards them. This passage also shows us that, you know what, the, the, the present discomforts that we endure, they fall greatly in comparison to the eternal weight of, of separation for those who, who don't know God, right? Who don't know him. That yes, our sufferings are hard, but can you imagine those who are going to be eternally separated from the God who loves and the God who creates them? And Stephen has this opportunity to be a witness and to pray for those, his enemies. And I think his enemy actually was standing right there at the time was one of his enemies, this, this guy named Saul. And it's amazing to see that um, he's the guy who ends up with Stephen's belongings. So he's looking at this guy that he just killed, right? Or that was part of the, the process. And what eventually happens to Saul? Well, he meets Jesus and he's transformed at the, at the, the road to Damascus. He's transformed. His eyes are open, right? And what does that show? That God's narrative, right, is, is so different from ours. Like, would we ever choose Saul? Probably not, but God does because God, God chooses those who are foolish, right? And, and, and he, he takes those who we would never think and he raises them up and he transforms them and he redeems them and he restores them and he sends them out. And Paul, Saul becomes Paul and writes most of the New Testament and impacts the world. And I, I love that. Do we see our enemies in that eyes or people that we call enemies? Do we see people who are far from God in those eyes that God can use anyone? There's one quote I just want to share with you. It's by Russell Moore. It's really awesome. Um, and it's, it just get, get, gets me thinking all the time of how I see people. It says, the next Billy Graham might be drunk right now. <laughs> the next Jonathan Edwards might be a man driving in front of you with the Darwin Fish bumper decal sticker, right? The Next, Charles Wesley might be currently a misogynistic, profanity-spewing, hip-hop artist. Next, Mother Teresa might be a heroin-addicted uh, person at the moment, right? We don't know who God is going to use. That's what he's trying to say. So let's stop judging like we do. Let's love people. And let's trust that God does want to restore each person and use them for his glory in the greater good of his story. Hope you guys have a great day.